In this video, I quickly want to show you how to install multiple NeoVim distributions. We're going to go over several of them, including Astro and Vim, LazyVim, NVChad, Kickstart, LunarVim. And I'm also going to show you how to deploy my own NeoVim configuration. There are plugins that do this already that allow you to download multiple configs, I think. But I just want to show you quickly the manual way of doing this. What you see on my screen is my blog post. I'm going to include a link to this in the video description so you can follow along and copy and paste all the commands. Notice the disclaimer that I have here. I use Mac OS. It's not going to make a big difference, but just so you keep it in mind. And this video comes from another video, LazyVim or Kickstart in NeoVim. This is just a shorter version that focuses only on showing you how to install multiple distributions. In this video, we will use the nvim app name environment variable, which controls the subdirectory that NeoVim will read from. Like I said before, a link to this guide is going to be in the video description. If you like this video and want to support me, you can share a tip. The link is shown here on the screen. If you want to help me reach more people, make sure you share my video. You can also follow me on social media. Here are both of the links. If you're following along, you will need to have some requirements. If you're working on Mac OS, Brew is one of them. I have a video if you don't know how to install it. You also need to install NeoVim. Notice that I also have a video. The link is there. And you need a terminal with true colors and undercurl. I'm currently using Ghosty, but it's not released publicly yet. But you can use Kitty or Westerm, for example. If you don't know how to set up Westerm or Kitty, notice that I have two links there. I go over my setup there in detail. There are several different ways of doing this. One of them is that you can download the different configurations or distributions to the .config directory. I'm not going to do this because I have a lot of stuff in that directory. If I copy this command and I go to my terminal, you'll be able to see that here. And that may be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to be using a different directory. But if you want to use that .config directory, you can do that. There's no problem at all. And if you do it, you can run each configuration with the command shown below. Notice that we're not setting this xdg config home variable. We're going to see that in a minute. Okay, so first of all, we're going to set up the variables that we're going to need. Notice that I'm setting here the download directory and I'm just setting the path to my NeoVim executable. Those are the two variables that you see on the top. I'm creating that directory and I'm switching to it. So just let me copy this command and I'm going to go to my terminal. This is the same thing that I'm following in my blog post on the browser. This is the exact same article. I'm just going to bring my terminal here and I'm going to paste what I copied. That's going to create the directory where I'm going to store all the different configurations. Let me just minimize this. Notice that this here is the directory where we're going to be storing each one of them. I'm using the full path to the NeoVim executable because I have a symlink. If I grab this here, let me just copy it and I'm just going to paste it here in my terminal. You're going to see there NVim alias 2 and you can see the alias there. That's the reason I'm using the full path because otherwise I would be calling this alias all the time. So first, let's add my NeoVim configuration. My configuration is the one that you see on the screen, is the one that I follow in all of my different videos. Make sure that you do the following in Chrome. Okay, so first, go to my .files latest repo, which is here. Here, I'm just going to type a dot on my keyboard, and that is going to bring up this editor page in GitHub. You can also switch it from .com here to .dev. That does the same thing. If we come here to the NeoVim directory, I have different distros in here, but the one that we're going to be working with today, or the one that we're going to be downloading is mine. So just right-click here, click here on download, and I'm going to store this in the directory that we created before. And I hit select here. I'm going to click here, view files, save changes. Notice that it's downloading here at the bottom. Okay, so the files have been downloaded. Let me switch back to the other page that I was in here. Let me scroll down a little bit. And now I'm just going to run the configuration that I downloaded. Notice that I specify here the distro NeoBean. So I'm just going to copy this and I go back to my terminal. I'm just going to paste it here. And that is going to download all of the different plugins. And once it's done, you will be able to get my configuration. You will be able to load my color scheme as well. So let me know how that goes in the comments. Notice that the last part of this command is just going to print the command that you need to run to execute this configuration. So let me go back to the terminal and I'm just going to quit here. You're going to notice here command to run the config is this command right here. So in case that you want to execute this configuration again, this is the command that you need to run. You won't be able to find that here in the guide. If we scroll down a little bit, here is the command. It's using the full path as you can see here. If you don't want to use that, you can replace this with this character here. So you can use a home relative path instead. If I copy this here and I switch back to the terminal and I run this, I'm going to run my my configuration. You're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit difficult to be running this command all the time because it's quite long. You can create an alias. So the only thing that you have to do, as you see here, is open your bash RC or CSHRC file and add this, what we had here. Notice here is the alias. You can add it at the bottom of your CSHRC file. And instead of running this command, now you can run this and it's going to do the same thing. So that's only if you want to configure an alias. If you don't want to do that, you can run the entire command or this one right here. 
here we have NVChat. If I go to the NVChat website, the link is here. You're going to notice the instructions there. It tells you to clone and it's just going to clone it in this config slash NVim directory and then open NeoVim. But I don't want to do that because that is going to replace my NVim configuration. Instead, I'm going to download it to a different directory and run it with the NVim app name command the same way that we did before. Notice that this command is written incorrectly so that you don't run it. Instead, we're going to run the command down here or the series of commands down here. The only thing that I'm going to be changing between all the different distributions is this repo here. So notice that NVChat, this is the repo that it clones. So I just grab this and I just pasted it here. Basically, this distro variable is just going to extract this here and be chat. This is going to clone the repo and this is going to run the configuration. This below here is just going to print the command that you need to use to run this config. So let me copy this. Now I'm going to switch back to my home directory. I'm just going to paste this here. I'm going to run it. And this is going to start downloading a lot of stuff. It's going to take a few minutes. Okay, so it seems it's done. Notice here, NVChat News. If I hit enter here, or if I hit escape or Q, what is it, Q? Yep. If I hit letter E, I can bring the file explorer. And I'm just going to quit here since we already demoed NVChat. Notice that at the bottom of the page here, I have some NVChat recommendations that are found in their website. Run Mason install all command after the LazyVim finishes downloading plugins. Then delete the git folder from the nvchat folder. If you want to learn more about nvchat, go to their website, follow the instructions and read the documentation there. Let's keep scrolling down here a little bit more. If you don't know what the difference between LazyVim and Kickstart is, go over this video that I created a few months ago. In this video, I also go over how I manage different distributions in my CSHRC file using symlinks, and I upload all of this to my dot .files. So if you still don't know which distribution to use, I would recommend you to watch this video. So if we keep scrolling down here a little bit more, you're going to notice the next distribution, which is LazyVim. The download instructions are in the LazyVim page. So let me go there real quick. Notice here that it says clone the starter and it gives us a URL here. So this is the URL that I'm going to use in my blog post or in my configuration. Let me go back here. Notice that on the repo, that is the URL that I pasted. The rest of the commands are exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to paste this here. I'm going to run it. And it's just going to start downloading everything that it needs. If I hit leader E, it's going to bring up the file explorer. If I hit leader E again, it's just going to hide it. And I'm going to press Q to quit. Notice here that the command to run this configuration is shown here at the bottom as well. But what happens if you lose this command. If we go back here and I copy the same thing again, notice that I copied the whole thing. Doesn't matter. I can execute this here again on my terminal and it's just going to run it without any issues. It's not going to clone the repo if it was already cloned. And we can see that here. Notice that it says fatal destination path already exists and it's not an empty directory. So you can run the command multiple times. Nothing wrong is going to happen. And it's going to show you the command here to execute or run this config in case that you want to create an alias for it or something. So let's move on to the next configuration. The next one is kickstart, the exact same thing. The download instructions can be found in the GitHub repo. Let me go there real quick. And if we scroll down here a little bit, you're going to find here under Linux and Mac, the git clone command. So the only thing that I did was to grab this part here. And this is what you see here if I go back to my blog post under repo. The rest of these commands are the exact same thing. So let me just copy this. Let me go to my home directory. I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to run it. That is going to download and install kickstart. I'm just going to quit out of here. Notice that the command command to run the configuration is again shown here at the bottom. Now for kickstart, the first thing that you want to do is open the init.lua file and go from there. So I have the command to the init.lua file here. This is the exact same command that I have here. The only difference is that it opens the init.lua file here at the end. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my home directory. I'm going to paste this here. I don't have the right command. Let me go to downloads. And now here, let me go to test configs. Here it is. Here I have nvim.lua, which is the one for kickstart. Let me try to run this command again, but I'm going to point to the init.lua file. So it's just nvim.lua, init.lua. So I'm just going to execute this file and this is going to show you kickstart.nvim. So basically just go through the entire document. You're going to learn way more and it's going to teach you how to set everything up from scratch. Now, as you may have noticed, most of these distributions come with the NeoTree file explorer. If you want to use a different file explorer that gives you a preview, it's like a combination between oil and NeoTree. Notice that here I have different files. On the right hand side, I can see a preview for each one of them. I have some advanced key maps that allow me to do a lot of different things. For example, in this directory, I'm going to press leader YZ. Notice that it was zipped and copied to the clipboard. So now I can share this zip file with other applications, for example. Notice that here is the file in my clipboard. So if you want to learn more about mini that files and all of those advanced key maps, go and check this video out.
Now moving on to the next distribution, LunarBIM. Let me go to the repo real quick. It opened it here on the right. Let me see if the instructions to install it are here. If we scroll down a little bit more, there was the install section. I don't see a command here, but all I did for the distribution was to grab what is in here, basically the URL to clone the repo. So if we go back to the other tab, you're going to notice that that repo is the one that we have here. The rest of these commands are exactly the same. Just going to copy this. Just going to go back to my terminal here. Just going to quit out of here, paste this, execute it. And you're going to notice that it's going to clone and download all the packages. It's downloading right now. It's going to take a few minutes. It seems that it's done downloading. I'm just going to press Q here to quit. If I press letter E, it's going to bring the file explorer. I'm going to press letter E again. It's just going to hide it. So this is Lunar Bim. Let me quit out of here. Let me execute the exact same thing again, just so you can see that it's going to bring it up. And there we go. It's going to quit out of here with Q. Let's move on to the next one, which is Astro NVIM. Again, the download instructions are in the GitHub repo. Let me go to the repo real quick so that I can show you where I got the URL from. Let me close this. If we scroll down here a little bit, we're going to find here the clone the template repo. So this is the URL that I grabbed from here. Let's go back to my blog post. That is the URL that you see here. So let me just copy this. Let me go back to my home directory. I'm going to paste this here, and that is going to start downloading all the files that are needed. Notice that it's taking a few minutes. And after installing everything that is needed, we have Astro NVIM on the screen. Just going to quit out of here with Q, I guess. Escape, maybe. I don't see an option to quit here, so I'm just going to press Shift Z Q. That takes me out. Let's go back here to the blog post. So those are all the distributions that I wanted to go over. This is going to give you the idea on how to download other distributions in case you want to test others out. Just basically follow the same procedure and just replace the URL that is needed to clone that other distribution. Replace it here and copy and paste the whole thing and you should be good to go. Most of the repos, as you can see here, are going to have their own .git directory. So just make sure that you delete this in case that you're planning to upload these distributions to your own .files. So what do I mean by this? Let me go back here to my home directory. Let me bring up my distribution here, and I'm just going to go to each one of them. Notice that Astro NVIM has this .git directory there. LazyVim has it there as well. LunarVim, mine does not. And VChat has it there, and Kickstart has it there as well. I can easily delete them in many .files. For example, if I go here to the right, DD. Then I go to NVChat DD. Then I go here to LunarVim DD, LazyVim DD, and AstroVim DD. Then I just type the letter S to sync. And then I type the letter Y for yes. And I just deleted all of them. As you're able to tell, I'm navigating my macOS applications without a mouse. This is not only for the browser, but basically any other macOS application. If you want to know how I do that, you can go and check this video out. I talk about it in detail there. So let's keep scrolling down here. If you're done testing and you want to clean stuff up, just make sure that you delete the directories in this local slash share because that's where the plugin data is downloaded. So if I copy this CD directory, go back here, let me quit out of here. I'm just going to paste this here. Let me list what I have here. You're going to notice that there's a lot of stuff there. So just make sure that you delete what is not needed. If you're getting started with NeoVim and you don't know what to do or how to practice, I would recommend you to start with Markdown. Take your notes in NeoVim and that is going to be a great practice. If you want to learn about my Markdown workflow, I have a video as well. You can go and check it out. It's listed here. I go over every single different Markdown tip that I have available. So hopefully with this video, you will know two things to download all of the different distributions that you want to test out in NeoVim without affecting your current setup. And also you can grab other people's configurations the exact same way that we did with mine. You remember that we downloaded my NeoVim directory, we copied it, and then we were able to execute it. So if you go to other dot files, you find the NeoVim configuration that you like and that you would like to test. You could try to follow the same procedure and it should work. Okay, so I hope this video is useful. Let me know how it goes down in the comments. If you like the video, leave a comment down below. That is going to help me so that YouTube shows my video to more people. And if you liked it, make sure that you share it with other people as well. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.